Okay, let's create a servlet now. Um, first of all, um, yeah, before I start creating the servlet, now I'd like to mention that a servlet is actually a Java class that um, that resides on the Tomcat uh, instance. See, Tomcat acts as a container, and uh, you know the Tomcat instance is going to run the Java class that we create, uh, and this class is going to run on the VM. Uh, which is on the server where Tomcat is deployed. So it, it's analogous to, uh, you know, a simple Java class that you write with the main method and execute it on your uh, desktop. But uh, the difference is, of course, that, as I said, it's, it's running on a different uh, machine where uh, Tomcat is installed. Of course, in our case, it's on the same machine, but it could be on a different uh, server. And uh, the second difference is that, uh, you know, the servlet will not have a main method. Uh, there are some default methods that get executed when you access the servlet and um, Tomcat is going to execute them. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and create a servlet. So I uh, right click on the project here and uh, I'll say new. You should see a servlet entry here. If you do not see that, go to the other option and uh, go to the web folder. Um, this is the folder in which we selected the dynamic web project. So in this folder, you should see a servlet option. To click on that, press next. Uh, the project is the project where we right clicked and chose the option. Source folder is something we've selected in the previous instance. Uh, I'll give the Java package. Uh, this is the package for the class. As I said, the servlet we are creating is, is just another Java class. Okay, I've given the package name and the class name. I will um, I'll just give that as simple servlet. Note that the super class has been auto selected. It's uh, it's taken HTTP servlet as the super class. Um, this is actually required when you're creating a servlet. You should have HTTP servlet as the super class. If you're if you're just writing a Java class. Uh, you know, I mean, if you're not using this wizard and you're just creating a class using, um, you know, right, even using either the right click new class or just starting out a new file without the ID, you would have to extend this. Uh, here, Eclipse does that automatically. Uh, I'm not using an existing class and creating a new one, so I'll leave this unchecked. I'll press next. Uh, here, I can enter the name of the of the sublet. Um, it's taken the default as the, the class name that I entered in the previous screen. So I'll just leave that here as it is. You can, of course, change it. Description. Okay, let me enter something here. I've just entered it here so that you know where it goes, but it's not really required for the servlet to work. Initialization parameters, I'm going to leave it as blank. We'll come back to this later. URL mapping is again auto-populated with the, the the class name that we that we selected. Um, what this means is that uh, when this particular URL pattern is used to access the web application, Tomcat automatically comes to the servlet and asks the servlet to execute. So you can add as many URL patterns as you want here, so that if any of these patterns match what the user is uh, requesting, then it'll come to the servlet. Uh, just to show the difference, what I'll do here is I'll just call this as a simple servlet path so that uh, you can make out the difference. It's, it doesn't exactly have to be the same as the class name here. So I'll press next. These are the modifiers, interfaces. I'm going to leave all these as it is. I don't need a constructor. And these are the abstract methods. We're getting this from um, the HTTP servlet that we uh, extended in the earlier screen. Uh, do get and do post are selected here. I'm going to uncheck do post so that we just have do get. I don't need anything else. I'll we'll just say finish. Okay, there you go. Our uh, servlet is created. So the things that uh, really mark this um, and make this different from an, uh, just another Java class is, of course, we saw this. It extends HTTP servlet and um, 
it, it, it implements the do get method from the HTTP servlet. We check that, you know, in the uh, implement abstract classes uh, screen. And then the other difference is this annotation line that you see here. You see that it has uh, a web servlet annotation with two properties. One is the description and one is URL patterns. Description, as this is as we entered uh, earlier, we uh, just had some text here so that it documents what the servlet does. And um, URL patterns, as I explained before, it tells Tomcat that, uh, okay, when this URL is, you know, is uh, accessed by the user, come to the servlet. And uh, when it comes to the servlet, of course, it executes only the do-get method because the do-get is the default for any simple URL request. There's also a do-post that we would, you know, frequently use, uh, which I'll get back to later. But for now, just let's focus on the do-get. So I can write any code here and then when uh, the URL is executed with the context name of the application and the servlet name so that it comes to this servlet, then Tomcat automatically executes the do-get method. So let me write some simple code here. I'll just say um, system dot out dot println. Hello from get method. Just a system dot out. Actually, um, this will print to the Tomcat log files. Again, this system dot out actually depends on how the server implements it. Tomcat by default, when you do a system dot out in any of the code that runs in Tomcat, uh, it just takes that text and prints it to the logs. So you should see that in the console here. So um, now we're done, I'll save this and um, go to this in the package explorer. As you can see, it's created a package and it's created a simple Java class here inside this package, which is the one we've just edited. So I can right click on it and say run as run on server. So it deploys this servlet inside the Tomcat instance. And then of course, you know, uh, accesses this URL. So, um, so here we go. So we have the application context so that it's accessing this application and then we have the servlet path so that it accesses this servlet and um, it gets this from the context uh, which we've selected earlier and it gets this value by looking at the annotation that we've entered here. So um, when you access this Tomcat will first say hey this it's calling this application so let me go to this application and then it looks at uh, the following word it says, hey, it's calling simple servlet path. Now, which of these uh, servlets inside this application has the URL patterns as the simple servlet path? It sees only one servlet here. And yes, that servlet does have URL patterns as simple servlet path. So as I said, by default, it executes the do get method. And it prints hello from get method. And hello from get method text is in the Tomcat logs. Well, this is fine, but um, as you can see here, the response is blank. You know, that you're supposed to get a web page when you access this URL. It's just showed a blank web page. That is because we are not actually printing any HTML and sending it back to the client. In order to do that, what we need to do is we need to use the parameters that Tomcat passes to this do get method. You can see here, there are two parameters that are passed. One is a request and one is a response. A request is of type HTTP servlet request and the responses of type HTTP servlet response. Uh, we'll come back to what the request does later, but uh, let's focus the, on the response for now. The response is where you actually uh, send HTML response to the client side. So um, what you can do is you can just take this response object and uh, there is something called as a print writer. So when you do a response.get writer, You'll get a print writer object. So I'm going to take that into a variable here. Print writer. I'll call it writer equals response dot get writer. Of course, I'll have to import this print writer guy here. It's in java.io. Import that. Now I can use this writer object 
and call the print ln method and I can actually print HTML here so I can pass string here which can actually be HTML text and that HTML text will get rendered over here so let let me use some HTML tags here I'll just use a h3 hello in HTML and of course close the tag save this so when I save this since it's already deployed it should uh, Tomcat should automatically detect that and um, reload the context yes there it does it so I don't have to deploy it again it's automatically done it for us so now if I refresh this as you can see the the earlier statement executes and then now this also executes and uh, it actually renders the HTML rather than just print the text because uh, you know you can see the text has been printed in bold h3